Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about equivalence relations. So for the do now, for number one, we have the following. Points A, B, C, and D, and E are on a line segment with endpoints A and E. The points are listed in order from left to right such that the distance between points C and D is equal to one half the distance between point A and B. Then the distance between point B and C is one half the distance between point C and D. And the distance between point AB is equal to one half the distance between points AE. And the distance from points AE is equal to 12. What is the distance between points A and D? So in order to solve this, we want to draw a line with the various segments on it. So as you can see, the entire segment is 12 uh, inches or centimeters or whatever unit, okay? So how do we solve this? Well, we have to work with what we have here, okay? So we know that, for example, in this case, segment CD is half of AB, right? But do we know what AB is? Well, we know that AB is half of AE. So that means that AB has to be six because it's half of it. So let me write this on the side here. So here we have that AE is equal to 12. Therefore, we know that AB is equal to six, okay? And now we know that CD is equal to half of AB. So let's write this here that CD is equal to three. So let's label it here. And we also know that BC is equal to half of CD, right? So we're gonna write that BC is now equal to 1.5. Notice that this diagram is not drawn to scale. And also never assume any diagrams drawn to scale in geometry, okay? So now the last thing is to figure out what the distance from D to E is, okay? So what we can do here is sum up all the points. So here we have six plus three is nine, and then we add 1.5, we have 10.5, so we need another 1.5 to get to 12, okay? And this makes sense because these two add up to three and we have three plus three is six and six plus six is 12, so it works. Okay, so we found the distance from A to D, didn't we? Well, not yet. So from A to D, we add up the distances of six, 1.5 and three, and the distance is 10.5, okay? And that is the answer for AD, the answer is 10.5, okay? So let's go over to the second question. X is equal to four. If Y is equal to X, what can we conclude about Y and Y? Okay, so as you can see here, uh, we can actually conclude that in this particular case that Y must also equal to four, okay? So this looks very similar to one of the logic operations that we did so far. As you remember, we had if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore, if P then R, right? And here we use the chain rule. Now, this is actually a little bit different now because here we don't have if then statements. Here we're using a different type of postulate or property. And let me introduce that to you. So here we're using something called transitive transitive property, okay? But here we call, could have also used something called the substitution postulate, okay? So let me write this down, substitution postulate, okay? So it all depends. So there are a little bit different, but we are going to learn in the next coming lessons why they are different, okay? Uh, so most likely when you're dealing with equalities here, uh, you can interchange these two properties, okay? But once we deal with inequalities, then you have to be very careful which postulate or which property you are using. Uh, another thing to mention here is that uh, the word property and postulate can be interchanged, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's now look at Something else here with the second part of the do now. Here we have this sign, okay? So let me write this over here. What is this sign? 
Well, as we all know, this sign means equal. As a matter of fact, with this sign, we're actually comparing two different objects, okay? Or we can say it's kind of like a relationship between two objects. So equal is a relationship between two or more objects, okay? And as a matter of fact, here we're comparing, for example, the Y with the X in this case, right? Uh, or we compare comparing the Y with the four, and we're saying they're equal because we are having a relationship here. Here we're saying they're equal because uh, we're developing the relationship between these two objects, okay? So let's keep this in mind for today's lesson because we are going to need it when we develop the concept of equivalence relation. Now, as I mentioned here, uh, the equality somehow has some type of relation here, okay? So let me highlight this. So here we have a relation, okay? Let me actually delete that, okay? So here we have a relation. That's what the equality sign means. So let me give you the definition of relation now. So a relation is an association between two or more objects of a set. And here's an example of a relation. Congruence, right? Because here we're comparing an object A to another object B. For example, we can say that object A is congruent to object B. What are some other types of relations where we compare two objects? Well, equality is one of them, congruence is one of them. What else could we use to compare two objects in mathematics or specifically in geometry? For example, parallelism, right? Object A is parallel to object B. Or perpendicularity. Object A is perpendicular to object B. Or similarity. Object A is similar to object B. Greater, object A is greater than object B. Is as tall as object A is as tall as object B. And so on and so on. There are many different relations in which you can compare two or more objects. So let's take the word congruent in which object could be congruent to itself here, okay? So um, in this case, let me first draw a triangle, okay? And as you know, you can have triangles that could be uh, congruent to other triangles, right? But anyways, let's say you have a triangle A here. Let me call this triangle A. What can we say about, if I just show you one triangle, what can you say about congruence? Is this triangle congruent to anything uh, if you don't know any other triangle here? Well, in this case, the only thing you can say is that triangle A is congruent to itself, to triangle A, okay? Now, this is actually an example of the reflexive property. Okay, so the reflexive property states that every object is congruent to itself, or for example, I am as tall as myself, or, uh, you know, a line could be parallel to itself. Is that possible? Well, there's something to think about, you know, maybe not everything is satisfied by the reflexive property. Okay, so let's take that a step further. Let's say the second case, you have two triangles that are congruent, triangle A and triangle B. So here we can say that if triangle A is congruent to triangle B, then what can we say here? That triangle B is congruent to triangle A, okay? Now that is called the symmetric property. Okay, and finally for case three, Let's say for case three, we have triangle A, B, and C, they are congruent, okay? So in this case, now we can say that, okay, if triangle A is congruent to triangle B, and triangle B is congruent to triangle C, then what can we conclude here? Well, then we can say that triangle A is congruent to triangle C, okay? And that is called the transitive property. So let's summarize all three properties that we have learned so far. The first one is the reflexive property, 
which means that any object is associated with itself. Example number A is equal to number A, or triangle A is congruent to triangle A. Then we had the symmetric property when A is associated with B, then B is associated with A, right? In our example, we had that if triangle A was congruent to triangle B, then triangle B is congruent to triangle A. And finally, for the transitive property, if A is associated with B and B is associated with C, then A is associated with C. Or basically, if triangle A is congruent to triangle B and triangle B is congruent to triangle C, then triangle A is congruent to triangle C. So this is also abbreviated as the RST property, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive property. Now, it turns out that if all three properties are satisfied for any of the relations that we have learned, then we have something called an equivalence relation. So let's look at it, the definition. A relation is an equivalence relation if and only if it satisfies the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive property at the same time. Okay, so let's look at this example. The word congruent, if you look at this relation, it does satisfy the reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property as shown here in the table. So therefore, we can say that, yes, it is an equivalence relation. What about parallel? Can an object be parallel to itself? Well, according to the definition in Euclidean geometry, the answer is no. What about symmetric property? If, let's say, line A is parallel to line B, then line B is parallel to line A. So that's correct. That works. Transitive property. If line A is parallel to line B and line B is parallel to line C, then yes, line A is parallel to line C. Is this an equivalence relation? And the answer is no because one of them does not work, which is the reflexive property. What about similar? Let's say you have two triangles. Can a triangle be similar to itself? Well, the answer is yes, because here similarity has to do something with something called scale factor. And in this case, it's just a scale factor of one. It satisfies the symmetric property and also the transitive property. So yes, it's an equivalence relation is taller than. So can an object be taller than itself? And the answer is no. What about symmetric property? If object A is taller than object B, then object B cannot be taller than object A. And for the transitive property, it satisfies as well. So here we can say yes, okay? So therefore, we can say that this is not an equivalence relation. Uh, with greater than is actually very similar to uh, is taller than. Here we can say no, no. Uh, then we can say yes over here and no for the equivalence relation. Now here's a question. Do you know a statement where none of the three properties work? So that's something for you to think about. And if you have an answer, please post it in this YouTube video. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post a comment. And otherwise, uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.